and welcome to Bickering Book Reviews. I'm Sarah. And I'm Becky. And today we're talking about Jennifer Matthews. I think yeah. it's Matthew. Jennifer Matthews Moxie, um, which we got. Did you get it on that galley? Because I got it on that galley. I got it at BEA, and then I didn't have. I needed to be able to access it digitally, so I got it through NetGalley, too. Oh, wait. Moxie was the one that people were, like, guarding. Moxie was the one that the publishers brought out, and literally there was, like, a circle of publishers around it, and they wouldn't let people... We had, they had to scan our name tags before we actually got access to it. See, and after reading it, I get why. Yeah. It was, it was worth it. <laughs> um, okay, so let's just go into what this book is about. So Vil Vivian's school is run by the chauvinistic football players who can often be heard demanding female classmates to make them a sandwich. Um, Vivian has reached her limit and decided to take a page out of her mother's Riot Girl handbook and creates a zine called Moxie, which uh, incites the other females in her school to kind of start a movement to combat these terrible behaviors. Um, so Vivian and her fellow feminists are starting to unite against the unacceptable misogynistic behavior um, and just it kind of goes from there and how they're able to take back their school. Right. I like this book. Um, first of all, I like the cover, which you will see on the, the cover screen. was pretty I think awesome. the, I think the cover kind of like really like points apart, makes a point of what it's about. I also like there's like so much talk now about feminism and people are so under like don't understand what they can do to be conservative feminist and is it bad to be a feminist? Is it good to be a feminist? And I thought that the author did a really good chance, made a really good argument of how easy it is to embrace your feminism. She did, but I also think she capitalized on the fact that I think our country is primed and ready for any kind of, like, political movement or, like, activism. Right. And I think, like, it's always been important, it, you know, and I'm glad that there's the discussion out there. But I think that we're, like, as a society, we're really kind of ready for that type of activism. Plus, I love that she, like, referred to kind of the powerhouse hitters of feminism, like Roxane Gay and yeah. different things. So, like, she really pointed points readers to other... And it was contemporary. It wasn't just, like, we're going to talk about Gloria Steinem. It was, like, somebody that, like, is currently still in the discussion. Right. Which I think is awesome. Right. It and really is awesome. I really liked... Um, she actually showed you images of the zine... So I love the multimedia. Always, whenever they sprinkle a multimedia, I'm all about it. Yes. Like I love that multimedia aspect. Plus, I think the cover kind of, um, I think the cover kind of brings in hints of the zined feel. So I feel like when we actually like hold the physical, real physical copy in our hands, it'll really feel like a zine. I think. I also liked there was um, different <laughs> angles that they showed of the girls' friendships, and like they showed the different way they were interacting. And I liked that. I thought that you don't necessarily see something that it was, there wasn't any cattiness. It was all like support. There was no double backhandedness or anything. Well, I think she was really good at showing the different layers and the different sides of things, even with um, the boy crush, Seth. I loved Seth. So Seth was really great, but sh I think she showed him in a real way. Like he right. wasn't perfect, all on board, idealistic guy that you would never find in real life. I think she really kind of took a realistic view of this guy who, you know, wants to be supportive of, you know, his girl, possible girlfriend. Um, but sometimes he just doesn't understand it all. And, you know, well, he can't sometimes because he's not a girl. And I think Seth was also really good because I think that he showed how Sometimes there is a boy in this situation and they're witnessing things. Like, it got really, like, the football team was doing horrible things. Like, there was inappropriate touching. And he was he was a male in the situation where they were getting away with a lot of stuff. But he was even like, this isn't right. I know it's not right. Not just because it's happening, you know, it's another person this is happening to and this shouldn't happen to a person. And I don't think that you get to see that. You don't necessarily get to see a heterosexual male character be supportive of females like that. I can agree. And I think she really kind of used him to, to prove that in that he even, he, Seth, referred to other guys in the school who weren't like the misogynistic football players. Right. You know, and I think it really kind of discussed that layer even with other right. characters. Um, but my kind of issue with it, kind of but not really, was that there was a lot of issues going on with those there football was. players. I there mean, was. like, so much. Like, unrealistically so. they were. I mean, they were doing the bump and grab. They were there yelling was, out jokes about making people sandwiches. I mean, like, it was really bad. There was, really like, mere sexual assaults being ignored. 
I mean, it was definite sex. Like, it was sexual yeah. assault in the school hallways. Right. So, but I'm okay with it because I, I get why she had, like, she had to do, like, she really kind of had to amp up and kind of make it, I think, make it stand out. And I think to do that, she had to include all of those issues. Plus, I think, yes, she went to an extreme place, but, I mean, I feel like also it was, this was a football town, and these boys were, like, viewed as gods, and as a person who went to a very big football college, I can kind of see, like, it was not, nothing near, like, that, but I can also see how if this is, like, the only thing going on in the town, if they were raised to a deity level, they might have done these things. I mean, really? Because they were blatant. I could see... And not necessarily no outcry. Not necessarily all of it at once, but okay. I could see some levels of it. And then I kind of want to bring it back around to I've so I've read a lot of her other books, and they're very like serious, borderline dark. And this felt like I say light, but it was serious issues. Um, but it felt more hopeful and kind of like less dark. I feel like there was like. I don't want to say, like, a comedic angle, but it was, it, there was a less dark angle. And it has been optioned by Amy Poehler's company to be turned oh, into a movie. Amy Poehler would do, like, I can see Amy Poehler in this novel. Maybe it's the mom. Like, I, I can see kind of her, her thoughts process, her kind of acting style in this novel. So, and I, so I can see that it is, it's definitely not as dark. Um, yeah, no. We should just rate it. Okay, we're ready to go. All right, so our rating scale goes from five unicorns down to two unicorns. And if it is sucktacular, it doesn't get a horn, and it is a horse. So Where are you at with this? I gave it four unicorns. I liked it. I liked the message. I liked the characters. I liked the different angles and different perspectives she brought to it. I, I gave it a four as well. I think it would have pushed it to a five in that I needed a little bit more from Seth. Like, I love Seth, but I needed him developed, like, around the edges a little bit more. But other than that, yeah, it was great. So you should read it. Mm. All right, so adios. Bye.